welcome to perfect guardian and i'll tell you the principal upanishads in the upanishads we can study the graceful conflict of thought with thought the emergence of more satisfactory thought and the rejection of inadequate ideas hypotheses were advanced and rejected on the touchstone of experience and not as the dictate of a creed thus thought forced ahead to unravel the mystery of the world in which we live let's have a quick look at the 13 principal upanishads chandogya upanishad the chand yogya upanishad is the upanishad that belongs to the followers of the samaveda it is actually the last eight chapters of the 10 chapter chand yogya brahmana and it emphasizes the importance of chanting the sacred om and recommends a religious life which constitutes sacrifice charity austerity and the studies of the vedas while living in the house of a guru this upanishad contains the doctrine of reincarnation as an ethical consequence of karma It also lists and explains the value of human attributes like speech, will, thought, meditation, understanding, strength, memory, and hope. Now, Kena Upanishad. The Kena Upanishad derives its name from the word Kena, meaning by whom. It has four sections. The first two in verse and the other two in prose. The metrical portion deals with the supreme, unqualified Brahman. the absolute principle underlying the world of phenomena and the prose part deals with the supreme as god ishvara the kena upanishad concludes a sanderson pact puts it that austerity restraint and the work are the foundation of the mystical doctrine the vedas are its limbs and the truth is its home the one who knows it strikes of evil and becomes established in the most excellent infinite heavenly world then atharya upanishad the atharya upanishad belongs to the rigveda it is the purpose of this upanishad to lead the mind of the sacrificer away from the outer ceremonial to its inner meaning it deals with the genesis of the universe and the creation of life the senses the organs and the organism It also tries to delve into the identity of the intelligence that allows us to see, speak, smell, hear, and know. Now, Kausitya Upanishad. The Kausitya Upanishad explores the question whether there is an end to the cycle of reincarnation, and upholds the supremacy of the soul, which is ultimately responsible for everything it experiences. then katha upanishad katha upanishad which belongs to yajur veda consists of two chapters each of which has three sections it employs an ancient story from the rigveda about a father who gives his son to death yama while bringing out some of the highest teachings of mystical spirituality there are some passages common to the gita and katha upanishad psychology is explained here by using the analogy of a chariot the soul is the lord of the chariot which is the body the intuition is the chariot driver the mind the reins the senses the horses and the objects of the senses the paths those whose minds are undisciplined never reach their goal and go to reincarnate the wise and the disciplined it says obtain their goal and freed from the cycle of rebirth then mundaka upanishad the mundaka upanishad <coughs> belongs to the atharva veda and has three chapters each of which two has two sections the name is derived from the root mun as he that comprehends the teaching of the upanishad is saved or liberated from error and ignorance 
The Upanishad clearly states the distinction between the higher knowledge of the Supreme Brahman and the lower knowledge of the empirical world. The six Vedangas of phonetics, ritual, grammar, definitions, metrics and astrology. It is by this higher wisdom and not by sacrifices of worship which are here considered unsafe boats that one can reach the Brahman. Like the Katha, the Mundaka Upanishad warns against the ignorance of thinking oneself learned and going around deluded like the blind leading the blind. Only an ascetic, sannyasi, who has given up everything can obtain the highest knowledge. Then, Tatriya Upanishad. The Tatriya Upanishad is also part of the Yajur Veda. It is divided into three sections. The first deals with the science of phonetics and pronunciations. The second and the third deal with the knowledge of Supreme Self. Once again here, Om is emphasized as peace of the soul and the prayers end with Om and the chanting of peace, Shanti, thrice, often preceded by the thought. May we never hate. There is a debate regarding the relative importance of seeking the truth, going through austerity and studying the Vedas. One teacher says, Sut is first, another austerity and the third claims that study and teaching of Veda is the first because it includes austerity and discipline. Finally, it says that the high, highest goal is to know the Brahman. For that, it is the truth. Now, Brihada Brihadaranankar Upanishad. Now, Brihadara Ranaka Upanishad, which is generally recognized to be the most important of the Upanishad, consists of three sections. The Madhukanda, which expounds the teaching of the basic identity of the individual and the universal self. The Munikanda, which provides philosophical justification of the teaching and Khilakanda, which deals with the certain modes of worship and meditation. Upasana. Hearing the Updesha or the teaching, logical reflection and contemplative meditation. Then there is a Svetsvatra Upanishad. Now, Sveta Vatra Upanishad derives from its name from the sage who taught it. It is theistic in character and identifies the Supreme Brahman with Rudra, Shiva, who is conceived as the author of the world, its protector and guide. The emphasis is not on Brahman, the Absolute, whose complete perfection does not admit of any change or evolution, but on the personal Ishwara, omniscient and omnipotent, who is the manifested Brahma. This Upanishad teaches the unity of the soul and world in one supreme reality. It is an attempt to reconcile the different philosophical and religious views which prevailed at the times of its composition. Now, Isavasya Upanishad. The Isavasya Upanishad drives its name from the opening word of the text Isavasya or Isha meaning Lord that encloses all that moves in the world. Greatly revered, the short Upanishad is often put at the beginning of the Upanishads and marks the trend toward monotheism in the Upanishads. Its main purpose is to reach, its main purpose to teach the essential, essential unity of God and the world, being and becoming. It is interested not so much in the Absolute in itself as in the Absolute in relation to the world. It says that the renouncing the world and not coveting the positions of others can bring joy. The Isha Upanishad concludes with a prayer to Surya and Agni. Then Prasna Upanishad. The Prasna Upanishad belongs to the Atharva Veda and has six sections dealing with six questions of Prasna put to a sage by his disciples. The questions are, from where are all creatures born? How many angels support and will mean a creature and which is supreme? What is the relationship between the life, breath and the soul? What are sleep, waking and dreams? What is the result of meditating on the word Om? What are the 16 parts of the spirit? The Upanishad answers all six vital questions. Then, Mandukya Upanishad. 
The Mandukya Upanishad belongs to the Atharva Veda and is an exposition of the principle of Om as consisting of three elements A, U, M, which may be used to experience the soul itself. It contains 12 verses that delineate four levels of consciousness waking, dreaming, deep sleep, and a fourth mystical state of being one with the soul. This Upanishad by itself, it is said, is enough to lead one to liberation. Now, Matri Upanishad. The Matri Upanishad is the last of what are known as the principal Upanishads. It recommends meditation upon the soul and life. It says that the body is like a chariot without intelligence, but is driven by an intelligent being, who is pure, tranquil, breathless, selfless, undying, unborn, steadfast, independent and endless. The chariot is the mind. The reins are the five organs of perception. The horses are the organs of action. And the soul is unmanifest, imperceptible, incomprehensible, selfless steadfast, stainless and self-abiding. It also tells the story of King Brihadratra, who realized that his body is not eternal and went into the forest to practice austerity and sought liberation from reincarnating existence. So thank you. Please subscribe to my channel Perfect Guardian and give your comments.